This past week, I've had the privilege of ministering the Word of God in uh, Salt Lake City. I go there every year. I've been there nine years in a row and already plan to go back next year. But while I was there, just like any other place that I, I might be, I, I run across people that are struggling with mental and emotional issues. And they come to me a lot and for counseling. And uh, I want to take a brief moment with you and talk to you about um, this difficult situation that we're facing in our day. And I, th- I feel like the truth is we all suffer with mental and emotional issues sometime or another in our life. And I do believe that we all want to finish our course with joy. And yet we know that we go through those moments where it's not joyous. And, and we, but, but we want to finish our course. Paul said that in Acts 20, he says, None of these things move me, neither can I my life dear unto myself. I might finish my course. Later on in 2 Timothy, he tells us, he says, Look, I, I fought the good fight. I finished my course. So whatever he desired in Ephesians or Acts 20, he, des- he completed he says, I've done it. I, I've desired to finish my course, and I have finished my course. And a lot of people are not going to finish their course because they've been beat up emotionally, wounded by other people, by their own failures and faults. But here's the issue, and listen to it today, because I want to see you not end up either being paralyzed, or if you are paralyzed, and you're not able to move spiritually, and the Satan has lied to you and, and has you captive and, and um, in that position where you're numb spiritually, I want to see you get out of it. Well, first of all, let me say this. There's not one answer to every situation. But let me pose this thought to you. Could it be that our present day spiritual walk, listen to this carefully, our present day spiritual walk is so shallow compared to the present day negative and ungodly influences and the increased spiritual warfare that were, that were underneath, that we're not able to stand against the intense tide of, of this world, sin, and Satan. So what we, what we do is we opt out seeking other options besides the influence of the personal Holy Spirit in our lives. And the longer that I'm in the battle, the more I understand that my level of Christianity must grow and increase if I'm going to be able to stand and not falter. What spiritual disciplines are you developing to provide the necessary spiritual strength to be able to stand? What spiritual experiences are you walking in that provide the necessary ability to be mighty in spirit? And I'm not talking about being and doing religious activity, but activity, but I'm talking about being a true, genuine, intimate, intimate fellowship with God that leaves us uh, as full of the Spirit and therefore operating in uh, a renewed strength. And let me exhort you to find, do this, okay? Let me exhort you to find a secret place of prayer and learn to cry out to God in these moments that you feel paralyzed, mental anguish and emotional problems. Let me encourage you to designate a time that you're going to spend time with him, even if you don't feel like it, even if it doesn't seem like it's working. So many people say to me, preacher, my, I read my Bible. God doesn't speak to me or I pray, pray, but the prayers just bounce off the ceiling. Let me give you something to think about. This week I was in Salt Lake City. I told you that. And I knew that I was weak in my inner man. After a long day at church, Sunday morning, Sunday night preaching, and then getting up early, getting to the airport, flying up to Minneapolis, Minneapolis, over to Utah, plane was delayed. I, I fly into uh, Salt Lake City. I have to have over a drive, hour drive to, to Payson, Utah, getting to the church at 6.50 and preaching then at 7.10. And, and I preached the word. I spent time with people afterwards. I fellowship with the pastor. And when I got to my room, to the motel room there, I, I want to just say I was empty. And at this at moments like this, the enemy will try to attack my mind. He'll try to get me to think that, you know, I deserve to sit back and indulge in some carnal appetite and doing something that literally ends up giving place to the devil. And so I knew that I had to find that hiding place. I had to find that refuel, refueling station. I had to get before him who promises that they that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed with stream. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so here's why I discovered much of our problem is we're running on empty and we are doing and going through the uh, doing things without the fresh oil of heaven. And this is necessary. Honestly, it's necessary for the mother who's weary and well-doing to find that hiding place. This is necessary for the husband that goes to work and he faces insurmountable temptations on the job or wherever he's at. It's necessary for us to get, get that hiding place. 
Listen to me carefully. This is necessary to the college student that does goes to that secular campus where Christianity is not popular, in fact, rejected. I want to just say to you, I hope that you will listen to this and that you will spend the necessary time to that in that refueling station. Listen, we've been invited to the throne. I want to see you at the throne. I want to meet you there in prayer. I, I go there, and I found... This week on Monday, um, the next morning when I got up on Tuesday, I'm sorry, I, I found that refueling station. So give yourself to prayer and pray until you connect and read until he speaks. I want to see you finish your course. I want to see you fight the good fight. I want to see you keep the faith. Listen, Jesus is coming. I hope this will encourage you today. Listen to it another time and pass on and share it with somebody else. God bless you.